Uh, Theatre Cluid uh, continues to go from strength to strength and uh, at this present time is no exception and uh, we are going to be treat, we are treated to uh, a duet for one now following on from a successful tour in uh, 2017 this tour has been extended and it is Tom Kempl- Kem- Kempinski here we go, put your teeth in Andy Tom Kempinski's award winning play duet for one and uh, the tour will begin in Oxford Playhouse on Tuesday but it is coming up a little bit closer to home girls and boys uh, on the 3rd of September and runs until the 8th of September so you've only got a week to go see it it tells the story of a brilliant violinist who is uh, struck by an unforeseen tragedy and consults a psychiatrist uh, as she faces a future without music. It's a gripping, poignantly funny and untimely life-enhancing tribute to the human spirit. It sounds belting. Anyway, it stars, it stars amongst, uh, well, I was going to say amongst others, but it's just basically a two-hander. It stars uh, Belinda Lang uh, from the BBC's 2.4 Children, you remember that. And uh, a familiar face on Downton Abbey, uh, Jonathan Coy. And uh, I met, I, 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 I contacted them the other day uh, for a quick interview and I had a wonderful chat with both of them at two different, two different times, two different interviews. They were absolutely wonderful. They were so caring. Nice to me. Nice to me. That's what I like anyway. We'll start off uh, with Jonathan Coy and, uh, well, here you go. I'll let him, I'll let him explain the lot. Hello, Jonathan. Andy. How are you? Very good, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. Thanks ever so much for doing this. Pleasure, pleasure. Marvellous. I won't keep you long. I know you're, uh, you're in uh, the full swing of rehearsals at the minute, haven't you? Yeah. Life on the road, does it suit you well? Uh, I've, done, I've done quite a lot of it in my time. And uh, actually, you know, in, in many respects, it's been, it's been one of the pleasures of the job, you know, seeing these countries of ours. I'll say these countries, because you're in Wales, aren't you? That's right, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, I, yeah, as I say, I think it's been a great privilege. I mean, I've got to the, I've got to the stage where I don't like being away from home. Uh, funny enough, you know, uh, apart from Oxford, the places we're going to uh, on this sort of short short tour, uh, I've not been to before, so... Uh, oh, really? Uh, including including Mould, so I'm, I'm looking forward very much to, to seeing it. Oh, well, uh, you're in for a treat then, because Theatre Clued is a, it's a beautiful theatre. My colleagues I know who've, who've, who've played it speak, uh, speak very warmly of it. Yeah. It's very modern, although it opened in the 70s. It's, it's an odd thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, fun, it's fantastic. Yeah, but this, this is a... It sounds like a marvellous piece, although uh, the synopsis of it... I was reading the synopsis, and it, it sounds quite heavy. I don't think it is heavy. I mean, it's... it's, it's uh, I've not done it before. Belinda's done it before. I'm, I'm, I've seen it in the past. It's just, it's just a very... Uh, you know, working on it and having seen it before, it's just a very engaging, involving... Uh, kind of uh, emotionally cathartic kind of experience for an audience, I think. And the sort of, the two of them, it's not, uh, you know, talking from my my perspective as the psychiatrist, it's not, I'm not one of those, you know, come in, lie down, uh, the joysticks burning in the the corner, tell me a bit about yourself. His way of of trying to help this woman through this crisis in her life is to be proactive and, and challenging. So it's quite, it's, you know, it's a, it's, a, a, a dynamic relationship as even within the course of, of the six sessions that we see it has big emotional ups and downs she's very resistant to begin with and, and uh, quite sarcastic of, of what he can do for her and all of that and so there's, you know, there's jokes she makes jokes at his expense so uh, yeah, I, I know what you mean the, the synopsis makes it sound gloomier than it is it's emotional, it's certainly emotional but yeah. uh, I would say kind of uplifting at the end at the end of the, the journey that you go on with these two. Well, I, I, I imagine as a, I mean, as a performer, it sounds like everybody's worst nightmare. To yeah, have. Well, I think as a human being, everyone's worst nightmare. 
time there, isn't correct, it? And, correct, and of course, yeah. That, that's what's, that's what's uh, kind of engaging about the play, is that it, it tells this particular story about this hugely gifted person who's, who's had a, a gift taken from her and the crisis that uh, is involved with that. But, you know, it's about, in a more general sense, it's about loss in the way that, you know, we can all, in whatever way, relate to a loss in our lives, you know. Yeah. Uh, in her case, it's it's a physical loss that means she can't express her huge talent anymore. But that's that's kind of that's kind of the metaphor of the play, in a, in a way, for for a kind of wider examination of, of of that kind of crisis. Yeah, is it a true story? Uh, no, I mean people always say that it's you know people always assume it's 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 based on. Uh, do you remember a, a, a great cellist called Jacqueline Dupre who had. MS and whose career was was ended. Um, right. But the, the the writer, who I don't know, but uh, I mean I know who he is. I don't know him personally. Uh, the writer maintained it had nothing to do with Jacqueline Dupre, but it would be very hard uh, if you knew anything about Jacqueline Dupre not to make uh, certain comparisons. Uh, I would say, but it's not. It's yeah. No, it, it's maybe that was the inspiration. And uh, but this this character, Belinda's character, is is a, a particular character of her own, you know. Yeah. And it's a two-hander, yeah. It's just a duet. Just duet for one, yeah. Two there you go. Two of us, yeah. Just the, two <laughs> the clues in the name, yeah. Um, <laughs> does that does that bring its own challenges as, a, as an actor? Yeah, it certainly does, yeah. I mean, you'd, you'd rather have a few a few other people to take the burden off you. <laughs> uh, there's no hiding place, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you know, the good thing is uh, Linda and I have known each other since our since our early twenties, I think, and uh, we right. together, worked together a couple of times over the years. Um, and uh, the director is an old friend of mine, so it's you know it's one of those nice things of like a... uh, coming together of, of people who know each other quite yeah. well. So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to play any kind of polite games with each other. You can just get on with it. Yeah, but you I mean I, I was reading somewhere. I mean, you, you, you're almost like on your fiftieth uh, anniversary as a professional actor. <laughs> Does, uh, I mean, I, what, what, what I always find amazing is uh, when people have done as much TV and film and theatre as yourself, they always seem to lean towards theatre. Yeah, that's, that's certainly true of, you know, my generation, my Belinda generation, I think. And I don't know whether it's still true of, of actors coming into it now. I think it's uh, a little bit more kind of uh, short-termism in, in people's thinking now. They want to come straight out of drama school and, you know, yeah. go into an HBO series or whatever. But, um, you know, uh, it's it's where most of us started. And uh, it's if you want, if you do want, I mean, you're talking about like 50 years, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, if, you, if, if, if you want, I do think if you want longevity uh, as, as a profession, then, you know, if you, if you don't have a theatre background, that's very hard to achieve. Um, as they say, it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, yeah. And you know, television and film can cheer you up and spit you out a bit, but. Um, uh, but I think from the outside, from from an outsider's point of view, you would assume that people would enjoy doing television and film as opposed to stage. But for the performers, they always seem to favour the stage. Has had, I mean, over those fifty years, I hope I haven't depressed you by saying that. By the way, uh, does, does that? Well, I'm very, I'm very lucky that I'm still hanging on to a twig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as, as the uh, the world of uh, the show business has it has it changed much over that time? Um, blimey, what a question! <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I think uh, I mean I, 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 I see with uh, with young actors, and you know, I've got two of my. Ch- my kids, I'm afraid, are, are young actors. It seems to me to have got a bit more brutal. Uh, but you know, maybe when I was younger, I could I could brush off the brutality a bit more easily. Um, uh. And and it's worse when you see you know when you see youngsters experiencing it. But you know, as I say, there's a, there's a bit more of a kind of throwaway feel to it. You know, you've got. You've got a chance to hit the ground running. If you don't hit the ground running, um, you're you're toast. You know. Whereas um, you know, I always felt you know, keep working, whatever it is. You know, as you yeah. say, 
it, television, film, theatre, radio. I've done a lot of radio too, which I've been very grateful for. You know, if if you if you keep working, you'll keep working. You know, work begets work. So, um, in that sense, you know, I, 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 I think that I'm sure that's still true. You know. Um, yeah. Can I just, uh, before you go, um, the, the fact that you've worked predominantly on TV in some really high high profile jobs. I mean, they're obviously very they're, they're very nice to help you get other jobs, as you say. Do you find that um, audiences they kind of they think they know you for a certain thing after being in so the, the likes of Downton Abbey? Will an, will an audience expect you to be of that sort of ilk at all times? Or no? I really, I, I mean, I think I think again, I've been very fortunate even on television to be in you know such a varied amount of work and um, again you know good luck does play a part um, you know when I signed up for Downton I was my character was in, in the first scene in the first episode and that was going to be it and then he seemed to recur occasionally too often he seemed to be on the other end of the telephone and not actually uh, a scene in the episode which is no good to me at all but uh, <laughs> um, so uh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's one of the funny things that people ask you, isn't it? What have I seen you in? Yes. And to, which, to which the response is, uh, I don't know. What do <laughs> what, you watch? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was a lad that I, I spoke to who'd been in, um, well, he'd, he'd done quite a few jobs, but he became known for uh, Gavin and Stacey. And, oh, yeah. uh, and I interviewed him and I asked him the same thing. Do people think they know you? And, and he said, yeah, but they, they, they think I'm their window cleaner because I've, <laughs> I've got that kind of face where yeah. I don't look famous, but I look like someone that, that they know. Yes, they know. Yeah. 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 Jonathan, it's been an absolute treat to speak to you. Thanks ever so much Thank for you. doing this. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in Cluid in, uh, well, it's, it's only about two weeks now. It is, yeah. yeah Marvellous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck with it and uh, look forward to Thank seeing you. it. Sounds, sounds Thank terrific. You. Thank you very much. Nice to speak to you. Yeah, cheers, mate. Bye. Cheers. Bye. So there you go. That is uh, Jonathan Coy. And uh, just to reiterate on the dates there, I didn't have them in front of me when I was speaking to them. It opens on the 3rd of September and runs until the 8th. And that is just in Theatre Clued as it will tour around the country. This is this duet for one. It's a wonderful bit of work. It has won all sorts of awards. It's gone crazy, this show has. And it's just a two-hander. And it stars, of course, Jonathan Coy there uh, from uh, Downton Abbey. And uh, you... you the, the problem is, you, you, you think, oh, do I know him? Do I know that face? Just have a look on my Facebook page, Andy Snowden at Calon FM stage and screen on the old Facebook there, and uh, and you'll know him. You'll know him. Anyway, as it's two-hander, uh, he is joined by uh, Belinda Lang. Now, uh, most people over the age of, uh, what, 20, 30? They will know, it's 30 actually, <laughs> uh, they will know Belinda uh, very well from uh, the BBC's 2.4 Children, a very, very popular uh, sitcom back in the 1990s, started in about 1990 and ended in 99, so it ran for nearly, well, t- t- almost 10 years it ran for, and uh, yeah, it was a belting programme, I was rather excited to speak to her actually, so here she is, without further ado, uh, Belinda Lang, here we are. Hey. I mean, it's been a very short rehearsal period because I had done the play before um, last year. Uh, so we're just doing it to rehearse him in and try and get me to remember. I mean, not, it's so weird. I thought I knew this, but <laughs> turns out I don't. Um, anyway, so that's what we're doing. So we've only had two weeks instead of three. Weeks. Does does it does it change much? Or do you, as I mean, as you've already done it before, do you sort of like try and do it from a clean slate with a new actor or? Um, you, 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 yeah, I mean, the clean slate, sort of, not completely because we're keeping, I mean, um, the set's the same and a lot of the moves have become the same sort of things. But, you know, he's free. If he, can, if he wanted to do something, he just does it. Yeah. And, then, and that's great because it opens things up. And then there are things where you go, well, this kind of has to be a bit like this because on this set, blah. But actually, you know... It's a play in which you could change things slightly, nightly, just to keep us cooking, yeah. as it were. Yeah. Uh. And he, he's different. Ronnie Cotton and he are very different people, and so um, he's got a different, a whole different take on the part. Uh, and I adjust accordingly. I was just looking, actually, on the internet today. You, you were in Theatre Cluids. 
this time last year, actually, with, with Gabriel. Uh, not last year, the year before. Oh, was it? God, yeah. that, that, that has been quick. Because <laughs> I came to see it with Paul McGann. And, um, uh, with Paul McGann. Oh, did you? Yeah, it was... Weird uh, play, don't it, you think? Yeah, it was. Very, um... I, I didn't... I was talking to one of the girls after it, uh, Venice, Venice Van Sommeren. Oh, Venice Van Sommeren, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and I was saying to her, I didn't know whether to laugh or be... <laughs> Upset by it, or it was very. It was. It, I, I really enjoyed it, though. I thought it was a terrific piece. Good, good. No, it was. It's a strange play. It hadn't hadn't been done since the first Beatles, because I wasn't happy with it. And uh, I mean, I can see that it needs a bit of attention here and there. But it was really worth having taking it out of wraps and having it... Well, apart from anything else, because nobody really knows about the fact that Guernsey was occupied. I didn't. I have no yes, idea. I, I kind of knew somewhere in my tired old brain, but I even I was going, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah? Well, I was talking to my dad about it, and he went, yeah, you know, that's actually true. And I went, really? It was true. I mean, obviously, the situation, the very play was made up, but no, I mean, it's incredible, absolutely incredible. So, this one, um, I mean, everybody obviously knows you from uh, 2.4 Children, which, for anybody that doesn't know, anybody that wasn't born before 1990, um, was, a, was a comedy, so do, are, are you kind of expected to do with the comedy roles now? Is that what people expect of you? Well, I don't know the answer to that, because it's been a long time since I've done that. I mean, I, generally speaking, don't do... I mean, this is not billed as a comedy, but it's got funny things. And generally speaking, we'll head towards things that have got some comedy in them, just because that's my taste. You know, I yeah. like Gabriel was a serious play, but it was funny as well. You know, yeah. she was a very witty woman. Uh, she went through. You know, in the end, it was like a kind of. Um, melodrama by the end by the time she'd murdered the really <laughs> Nazi yeah. um, but I don't think I'd have wanted to do the part if it hadn't had some comedy in it Yeah. and it's the same with this one I mean she's a funny woman I, mean, I, I don't like playing boring people uh, and I don't believe people don't have I, I know that in the bleakest moments one has to laugh <laughs> yeah well I think that's true I think that's a, a, a very British trait um, I mean, if you go to America, they don't really like to laugh at anything that's sad. We, as a British society, I think we try and find humour in all black comedy. Yeah, and even when we're going through it, you know, I mean, yeah. of course, there'll be moments when you're going through terrible things where a laugh is out of the question. But actually, I've been through some pretty dark things with other people who are going through them in the main. And I've always been amazed by the humour that people find in their bleakest hours. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a great resource. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I've always been attracted by that side of human beings, by the, the bit of them that uh, that spins things, I suppose. Yeah. So, I mean, just we just touched on uh, 2.4 Children there, and I, I appreciate that it was 1990s, but I suppose <laughs> it, 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 it seems like it was, like, a few years ago, because it was so, so popular, and it's, in this country we don't really get that kind of um, sitcom where it lasts 10 years. I mean, it almost lasts 10 years. We had a tradition of things, you know, uh, that people just liked and went on. And as in, if Gary hadn't died, yeah. we'd have gone on with it because A, it was very popular and B, we were all growing older with the show in a sort of natural way. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and really, it was one of the last programmes that you could sit down as a family and watch together and now everybody seems to go off into their own little zones to watch their own little programs which Very i true. find sad yeah it is because watching things together is why i like the theater you know watching things together is it's part of the fun yeah and then talking about it you know nobody talks about that's why things like love island are so popular you can talk about it yeah yeah and you just touched on it as well when when, when you i mean you hit the nail on the head where you say that you know, if you go and see a play on, on any given night, it could be different to the, any other night that you can go and watch it. Which won't, you'll never get that with TV or movies or... I mean, at the theatre, I often find myself turning to the person next to me, you know, if it's been exciting or what, and going, wow, you know, and then you'll end up having a chat with them about it because it's so, you know, it's a live thing that's just happened to you both. And you can get that from TV if you sit down together. Yeah. And, and it's actually really good. I mean, I... 
I mention Love Island because, you know, my daughter watches it. Yeah, and mine I too. Because she watches it. Yeah. And it gives us something to talk about that isn't just, you know, same old, same old. We, it's, yeah. uh, it's very... It's fertile ground, and that was lovely with 2.4, that three generations of people would have something to discuss, however silly it was. Yeah. It was a talking point. Well, great, you know? Yeah. <laughs> And are you aware when you're doing something like that? The, I mean, I suppose you don't really know until it goes out, but you, you start off by essentially getting a job and then suddenly you've got a hit on your hands. And Oh, yeah, and it's very slow. I mean, I think nowadays things are different, you know. You, uh, and, and everything now is so viewer-numbers-oriented. Yeah. But when we started that, it was, uh, it, was a, it was a different world, you know. And, of course, the ratings were became important. But the first year we did it, nobody mentioned the ratings. Yeah. Nobody mentioned it. And uh, John Nash, who was the head of comedy at the time, a man in a bow tie, you know, said, I remember him saying, we'll do this again, because I think this has the nudge factor. So yeah. I said, what's on the <laughs> And he said, it's not, we're well, not sitting rolling around laughing, but you, you nudge each other, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he said, that's something we like a lot here. Yeah. So there was no kind of, yeah, we really hit on a, you know, winning. It was very, it was a slow burn from that point of view. So, you know, I mean, that's not why we would do it. We weren't thinking, yes. I mean, now I think people really spin the wheel for a hit show. Yeah. That really wasn't the ethos yeah. in those days. It was, just, we're going to do this and let's have everybody likes it and it's lovely and if it goes again, that's great. Yeah. But one had a feeling that you were being supported by an organisation, be it TITV or BBC. And I did a lot of work for them and there was a feeling that they would support programmes and they would support artists, not with money, <laughs> but with other decent work. And yeah. that's all gone. Yeah, but you, you say that then because when I when I um, when I knew I was going to be speaking to you, I I had a look at what I thought I'll have a, I'll have a look at two point four two. I forgot what it was like, and I watched um, the Christmas episode. I forget what year it was, but it, I, I the the nudge factor is a very good way of describing it because it isn't literally laugh out loud, but it is a you know oh I I get that we we do that. <laughs> Yeah. You know, as a yeah. family, yeah, you know, yeah. you've got that. And just say before, I'll let you go, because you sound like you're, uh, you're on the way to the tube station, are you? <laughs> I am, but I've left myself plenty of time. <laughs> I've actually got my day organised. I've been away for a while doing a show somewhere else, and uh, and then I went and I had a bit of a holiday. Yeah. And I've come back to this mountain of mail. My house is falling to bits. Everything sort of... So I'm ramming everything I can into this two weeks before I go away again. Do you enjoy life on the road? Is it an enjoyable thing? It can be very enjoyable. I, I don't... I now do... I'm careful about doing it for too long as a stretch because it, it just gets a bit much after a while. I did Oklahoma for 26 weeks or something and that was yeah. too long. Yeah. Couldn't do that again. No. Um, but this is very short. This is only five weeks. I think eight weeks, nine weeks... Perfectly lovely, you know. You get home on Sundays. You can plan ahead if it's nice people. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's it can fun. be very, very enjoyable. And then every week, you, you know, you're never bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I did, um, I did Blood Brothers uh, in ninety, in the, well, in the nineties. And for the first twelve months, I was on tour. And then for the second two years, I was, I did it in the West End. And well, that's uh, great. Isn't it? Well, yes, absolutely. Water. But I would. My my point is, I wasn't a big fan of touring. But I didn't realise that until afterwards, until I was able to sleep in my own bed and do the show. <laughs> I I much yeah, preferred but touring that. Touring for a year is a nightmare. Yeah. Touring for eight weeks yeah. is quite fun. Yeah. Because I'm the big one for everyone gets together at the end of the show and all have a you know I always give everyone a drink in the dressing room and we yeah chat and about our day and the show and everything yeah so it's like a little party <laughs> yeah well I think that that is that is great if if you've got that as you say but uh... yes I had a, I had friends in the younger cast yeah but there were loads of young blokes in it who were just off straight off out for a pint and all the gym after the show. I know, never, never saw them for dust. Yeah. So it was... Um, Going to the gym seems very popular these days. After the show. <laughs> before the show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be I... in the pub. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I mean, just, just before you go, you, you touched on it there about uh, Love Island. And, and I asked Jonathan yesterday as well about, um, has he ever been offered anything like Celebrity Big Brother or I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here? But have you ever been offered? Would you ever fancy doing anything like that? I have been offered those kind of things and no is the answer not your thing it's sort of like you just think oh my god it's the kiss of death yeah um it really is it's sort of, for, 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 you know for a normal working actor that would not be a good move yeah and also i, I wouldn't like it i wouldn't enjoy it and also i mean something like uh, i'm a celebrity i couldn't even get there because i've got vertical i couldn't get over the ropey <laughs> bridge <laughs> I, I, I mean, I would quite fancy doing I'm a Celebrity if I ever was in that position, but Big Brother, I don't think. I just... I, I wouldn't like to do either of them because mm. I just don't think I'd be good at it. You know, I, I'm just not who I am. No. And I don't want to. And I get sent all these questionnaires when I'm doing shows, uh, expecting me to answer sort of questions about what I feel about, you know, yeah. my tips about... And I haven't got any. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what I... not, you know... Or, what, you know, what's the most interesting thing about you that people would find surprising? Nothing. <laughs> uh, or certainly nothing that I'm prepared to discuss in public. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's two different things. And there are people who are very good at all that, uh, but generally they're not actors. But people tend to be quite surprised if you're normal. And that's the weird thing, isn't it, about if you do anything on the TV, you're not allowed to be a normal person. Exactly. Yeah. And that's... I, I find that uh, that is uh, a result of our uh, celebrity culture, I suppose. Yeah. It's a very blurry thing because there are people who are naturally brilliant at that kind of thing and good luck to them and I let them all go off and be in Big Brother and I'm a celebrity and I, you know, those things are undoubtedly entertaining but uh, I don't think they're the province of people like me or Jonathan Coy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll let you go because uh, you, you, you're, you're at the station now. I take it. I can, I can. I can There's many people. I can hear you train. <laughs> <laughs> well, really look forward to coming to see you in Theatre Cluid and uh, and all the best with the tour. Well, I hope you enjoy it. I'm it's, sure I will. So, will you be at the whatever they call the press night there? Yes, I think that's what we'll we, we get in we get invited to all those these those things. But, oh, well, uh, we'll be sent to the bar at the end. So cool. Come and say hello. I will definitely. You'll know me. You'll be the one. You've had the most wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear a red rose, you won't miss me. <laughs> we can do numbers from Blood Brothers together. Perfect. <laughs> I always wanted to play that part, you know. Oh, well. You... Come on, Bill. Offer me the bloody part. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're the only actress that hasn't played it recently. I know. I'm going to see that as a triumph, actually. Yeah. I'm putting it on my CV. There you go. I've not been in Blood Brothers. <laughs> Yeah. I look forward to it. But it's, been, right. it's been an absolute treat to speak to you, Belinda. I'll, uh, I look forward to seeing you in um, in Mould in, well, it's a couple of weeks now, yeah? Yeah, brilliant. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye. 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 So there you go, uh, Jonathan Coy and Belinda Lang about to hit the road with Duet for One. Starts on the 28th of August at Oxford Playhouse, then we'll be coming to Theatre Cluid, then Salisbury Playhouse, Darlington Hippodrome, and then finishing off in the uh, the Grand Theatre in Wolverhampton. Ooh, very posh. But for us uh, Welshies, if you would like to go and see this up at Theatre Cluid, the box office number is 01352 701 521. I'll do it again. 01352 701 521. That is to go and see anything up at Theatre Cluid. But coming up next week, duet for one. It looks a belter. Support your local theatres, girls and boys. They won't be there forever if you don't.